Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.3 developer beta one released to developers and iOS 16.3 public beta one should be out by the time you're watching this video or usually by the following day. And this came in at a very large 5.33 gigabytes that's on my iPhone 14 pro max. And it's usually large when you're going from a public release that we were on with iOS 16.2 to a developer release. So anytime you do that, it reinstalls the OS and starts over again. It doesn't take up additional space it just overwrites everything. And this was released alongside iPad OS 16.3 beta one, Mac OS 13.2 beta one, watch OS 9.3 beta one, TV OS 16.3 beta one, and HomePod OS 16.3 beta one. All of those are available now. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go over to general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 20D5024E. This is the first build, so we're a few builds away from a final release. And the early builds typically have some changes in them, but the major changes usually come later. But there are some new features to talk about. The first thing is the overall modem. You can see the new modem firmware of 1.40. 0 .00. This modem firmware is new compared to iOS 16.2 public, which was 1.22.02. Hopefully that will help with some connectivity. I've had some issues with Wi-Fi, although that shouldn't really apply, but maybe it will help some. And the first new feature is a pretty major one Apple announced on their website that would be coming soon with future updates in 2023. You can see those if we go to the Apple newsroom and in the press release, they talked about using security keys to log into your Apple ID account. And that's something they've added with this update. So you can use a FIDO security key or YubiKey, and that can be found under settings, tap your name, and then go into password and security. And if we scroll down a little ways on password and security, you'll see the option for add security keys. If we tap on this, give it just a moment, it pops up and tells us about this. A FIDO certified security key is third party hardware that you can use to verify your identity when you sign in. It says strongest account security and replaces verification codes. We can learn more or add a security key. So we'll go ahead and add one. And it says you need two security keys. So you'll need two compatible keys and then we'll go ahead and hit continue. I'll show you how this works with one key and you'll need two to set it up, but we'll wait for it. We'll put in our iPhone passcode and now it says insert and activate your first security key. If you have a compatible NFC key, bring it near the top of this iPhone. And I actually do have one of those keys. Here's the key that I use with different account authentications. It's USB-C. If I bring it near the back here, you'll see that it's adding it all by itself. It added it and then I can name the key. We'll tap on next after we've named the key and then we can set it up. Then you do the same for the second key and you're good to go. Then anytime you sign in with your Apple ID, it will now prompt you for the security key instead of a two factor authentication code when it needs it. So that's great that they've added the security to iOS. With the introduction of iOS 16.2, we got Apple Music Sing. Now the first time you open your Apple Music app, you'll actually be greeted by a new splash screen that talks about it saying new in Apple Music, belt it, rap it, sing it. Sing along with real time lyrics and control the vocals on millions of songs, introducing Apple Music Sing. And then it tells you you can find your song. So they're just bringing more awareness to Apple Music Sing. And also under browse, we have a ton of information about it as well as different playlists. So that's something that's new that they're just really promoting here. So something a little bit more promoted in 16.3 than even 16.2 where they introduced it. When you go to transfer music from your phone to your home pod, you'll now get this little pop-up screen. And I've seen this twice now where it says transfer music and control home pod. You can bring iPhone to your home pod again later to view controls or transfer music. We've had this feature with handoff for quite some time, but now it's just making us more aware as we bring it closer. We'll hit continue and then of course go back to our song and it's just here. So we can hit play or we can transfer it back from our home pod to our iPhone. The next change has to do with Apple maps. It's a small change, but something they've updated. And if you go to maybe a local restaurant, you'll see here that it will say rate this place. We had the option to rate this before, but now it's popping up individually. Also, it looks a little different when you go into maps and search someplace. You can see with iOS 16.2 on the left and iOS 16.3 beta one on the right, where it says rate this place, they've changed the way it looks as far as it rating as and associated with your Apple ID. They've made it look a little bit different and 
they're just making some small visual changes. Within the code, there's an awful lot of changes to accessibility. There's a lot of code updates there, and we saw before with earlier betas of iOS 16.2 with beta 2 that Apple was actually preparing to make a custom accessibility mode according to what was found in the code by 9to5Mac and Mac Rumors. So you'll see here it says custom accessibility mode, preferred layout, and there's a lot of underlying code that's changed there. So maybe we could see that in the future with larger icons for different touch targets, making it easier to press. We're not seeing that yet, but hopefully we'll see that maybe with beta 2. One thing I wanted to mention though is with iOS 15.7.2, a lot of people were asking, can I downgrade from iOS 16.2 down to this version? You could do that when it was in developer with the iOS 15.7.2 RC. I did that on the iPhone 8 Plus that I have here. However, Apple is not making available the firmware files to downgrade using the latest updates with iOS 15.7.2. So they've only provided them for the iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, to the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus and SE. However, if you were on an iPhone 13, 13 Pro, any of those devices, but you hadn't upgraded to iOS 16 yet, you still could install 15.7.2, but they're not making it easy to downgrade. So it doesn't look like it's something you'll be able to easily do. Maybe if you had the release candidate file, you could try it, but there's not really a way to get that as Apple has pulled those from their developer website. But I just wanted to mention that it's just a security update otherwise. As far as bug fixes, Apple hasn't mentioned anything specifically. Within the feedback app, if we go into the latest release notes, it says there are no new release notes for this beta software update. So, so far we don't know if they've updated anything at all as they haven't said that they have, other than what we've found already. So hopefully they've fixed some things. I've had those swipe bugs, swipe home bugs, where it would lag a lot with iOS 16.2. I've also experienced where Wi-Fi would just stop working. So I'd be on YouTube in the YouTube app and it would say I had no internet connection, even though Wi-Fi was there. I'd have to turn it off and back on and then it would work. It would work fine on cellular and the rest of my devices connected to Wi-Fi work just fine. But for some reason on iOS 16.2 public release, I was having those issues. So hopefully they've resolved those. As far as the YouTube bug with it rotating, if we're playing a video and I rotate to landscape, you'll see it still stutters a little bit. All of my apps are up to date, so hopefully they fix this with a future update. It's probably a YouTube update that needs to be fixed though. Additionally, there's no other bugs that I know have been fixed. We won't know for a few days if things are behaving a little bit better. People continue to say storage is taking up a lot of space, but it seems to be pretty normal for me and I'm hearing good things from other people saying that they're not really seeing much of an issue as far as storage overall. That loaded super fast, that's much faster than 16.2, and it's just still loading system data, which can take a minute, so I'll give it just a moment. System data finished loading, and it's taking up 38.62 gigabytes of system data. That's completely normal. I have plenty of data free. It's using it as system cache, and as long as I can install apps, use my apps, it's not really a concern. So unless you're having an issue as far as not being able to install apps or use them because you're running out of storage due to that, I would really ignore it. Now, as far as overall performance, performance so far is nice and fast, but we know with iOS 16.2 that oftentimes it takes a few days for where we're playing a song, swipe home, it goes into the dynamic island, and then it would start to stutter after a few days. So it will take a few days to know that, and of course I'll have a follow-up on the weekend as we'll talk about if that's occurring again, how iOS 16.2 is for everyone, and even more. As far as overall battery life, well that will take a few days to measure, but we'll go into battery, battery health and charging and my phone is surprisingly down to 99%. I've been charging it the exact same way I did with my 13 Pro Max and it took an entire year before it dropped. So it's even using the same charger to charge, charging it in my car. And if we go into settings on the 13 Pro Max, you'll see after a year it dropped to 98%. We're down to 99 already on the 14 Pro Max. It's probably the first time I've seen that, but I don't really care too much about that. I'll use it for a year, and if I need to replace the battery, I'll do that. If we take a look at the overall battery life, battery life hasn't been great at three hours and 18 minutes of screen active time, three hours and five minutes of screen idle time, using about 70% of the battery. Hopefully this improves over the next few days. We'll have to see, and I may have to wipe the phone and start over just to see if it improves. Hasn't been great for me this year, especially with the latest phones with the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. And as far as the overall heat of the phone, it's surprisingly cool despite installing 40 app updates, having it on this entire 
entire video. So I'll show you the thermal camera. As I bring this over the hottest part of the phone, I'm seeing about 86 to 87 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's not too bad. Overall, it's pretty good. Let's switch to Celsius. And in the same area with Celsius, as I bring it over the hottest part of the phone, we're at about 31 degrees Celsius. So 30.9 to 31 degrees Celsius. Now the phone seems even cooler now that I've picked it up after showing you the overall heat signature from the FLIR camera. And that leads me to, should you install iOS 16.3 beta one? I would say because we won't probably have beta two until after 2023, I would hold off unless you have a secondary device. I don't normally recommend an early beta on your main phone. If you have an extra phone to test it on, an iPad or anything else, I would definitely try it out there, but probably not on your main phone. I'd see how iOS 16.2 is or check back for the follow-up this weekend where we'll see how it's been going on my phone as I plan to use it on my main device now. As far as iOS 16.3 beta 2's release, well, like I mentioned, it will probably be after January. Last year, we had iOS 15.3 beta 2 on January 11th. We had January 17th as the release day of 15.3 beta 1, and then it took until January 11th for the next release. So probably the second week of January is when I would expect Apple to release the next beta. Everyone's going to take a break for Christmas, the holidays, New Year, and then they'll come back to work and show the next beta. They could change this, they have changed it in the past, but we'll have to wait and see what they do with this. As far as the overall benchmarks, I did run those on this device just quickly, and they were pretty good. If we go to the CPU benchmarks here in the history, I ran this today and scored 1,866 for single core, 5,177 for multi-core. That's pretty good compared to the previous one and considering that it just rebooted and installed an entire OS. So it's still a little bit higher for single core. It's a little bit lower for multi-core, but doing well overall. And so that's everything with iOS 16.3 beta one. Of course, if I find more features, I'll be sure to let you know about those in a different video. And if you've found any more, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, it will be linked in the description as it always is. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.